Okay, in this episode, we want to work on our front air suspension. We're going to do a leak test on the air shocks, and then we're going to rebuild the front valve. Now, what we've already done is a check if the car sinks down overnight. You know that test where you bring it up into off-road height, then you pull your fuse in the fuse box to disable the air suspension, and you let it sit overnight and a little longer and then you can see what corner is actually sinking down our front driver side corner <laughs> so the front road. left corner yeah, so for our front, british uh, friends when the front left corner sinks down the front right corner also limps down a little bit because of the sway bar that's pretty normal but the one which sinks down further is most likely the problem what a mess looks like it's saturday Okay, so we interrupt my important work here with my chainsaw <laughs> to mount your wiper blade. Ah, it just lowered a little bit. The reason I'm mounting is so you stop annoying and bugging. Yeah. There is no rubber left. <laughs> yeah. And we put it on and yeah. I can go back to the important work. Yeah, so wow. H403. I want one too. So I got to put together my chainsaw. I put a new cylinder a new piston, new bearings and new seals into the crankshaft housing. What a nightmare. Oh my god. So Christian has a problem. We have one screw left. <laughs> oh look, there it goes. Oh my god. I left this out because I wasn't sure if I need to open it again. New o-ring for the tank because that was leaking and it yeah. was bugging me. And remember all that had been in my dishwasher. It's not funny, actually. It depends. If it's all clean, oh man, it's hot. This is the first starting attempt. It's a steel. It's not a Toyota. It's unfair, you know. We always have these discussions, and immediately when you stop the camera, you stop complaining. <laughs> oh my god. Christian wants to put that chainsaw permanently in my car. The chainsaw is like a Toyota. It just runs. That oil is supposed to be there. We loop the chain. It's biodegradable oil. Yeah. <laughs> So are you happy? Yeah, it's running, it's idling. It's idling a little high, but that's because the crank turned so hard in idle. It probably needs a few temperature cycles to get the bearings really seated. Oh my and God. <laughs> you got now a chainsaw for your car. Christian won't allow me to use it. <laughs> Somebody who can get hurt by walking with a knife from the kitchen into the dining room is not suitable for a chainsaw. So this project is done, now we go on your car. So not even this device is safe enough for you, okay? It looks completely harmless. And this is really such an amazing tool. You can just grab it and saw. It is so much easier to handle and to use and lighter than the gasoline chainsaw. So this was a really good investment. I'm also not allowed to use that. No, and you know why you're not allowed to use that? Your finger fits in oh. here because it wouldn't take long until you go, oh, there is a branch stuck. Zick, boop, done. <laughs> so I got a rebuilt kit for the valves and you can see there's three little plastic bags in here. So it's good for three valves. Don't I have four valves? <laughs> Why do you have to challenge me now? <laughs> We're gonna bring the vehicle into excess height. The reason is very simple. If we are later on exhausting the air using the gap tool, I mean, you can exhaust the air also by loosening the fittings, that's okay. But we'll do it by using the gap tool because we got one. Um, and when we do that, we don't want the vehicle to sink down in the back. So we already take it down into excess height now. There is still enough air in the struts um, yeah. to detect the leak, no doubt about that. Did you know that when you pull your key out, as long as you don't open the driver door, you can still raise and lower your windows? You mean a new check? Yeah. Oh, yeah, a bigger one. It was my idea. You see how I just mentioned a topic 
and then you get a full speech about it. Yes, you can cut all that out. <laughs> now I know where those dents are coming. That's when Christian hits it with a check. Second one. Yeah, yeah. yeah you see here. <laughs> We are here at LR time. Yeah. So I took both wheels off and we're gonna check now if there is a visible air leak using soapy water. With the wheels off the ground I can also see nicely the entire rubber bellow here. There is no leak on this side. Put some soapy water in here, right where the fitting is. Then I check if I see any bubbling on the fitting. There it's possible to see the fitting bubble if there is a leak. Okay, other side. Now see how the strut is already cracked here. They are so damn expensive that I was reluctant to buy new ones so far. So don't tell Vera in the comments that she needs new sharks because she will be bugging me day and night. She is making lunch right now. I would consider these sharks to be extremely robust if you think about how old this car is and how nice the ride still is. So I don't understand all the criticism about the air suspension of a Land Rover. Put plenty of water here on top of the shock. No bubbling. So now we're gonna take the wheel arch out. Don't wanna forget that there is a bolt inside the fender and I have to take the light out to get to this bolt, no other chance. This bolt we got to take out in order to get the wheel arch out. There's this little flap here on the front end. Don't rip this off. This is why I started over here. So taking the inner liner out is about a 10 minute job if you know how to do it and it just gives you a lot more access. And then you can also inspect the vehicle much better. For example, the ground points here, make sure they're not corroded. There are a bunch of cables and wires down here. We're gonna check those out while we have it open. And there is our valve. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, vent the entire system. I'm gonna get the entire air out of the system using the gap tool. And we go service and test. I would say it's suspension. I would say we're gonna say deflate corners and see what it's doing. Isn't that amazing? And it's even going down a little further there. Deflate in progress. I was always wondering what that noise is. And I think it's the valves. Hear it? So it's done and quiet. Now we can take the valve out. So my bracket is a little different because this is my winch controller here. I will take this out. And now one important thing is you want to put some WD-40 on these because the last thing you want is to pull any kind of dirt in you know, through those O-rings and later on have a leak when you're done fixing it. So look at that. That has never happened before. It's almost hitting the ground. <laughs> it's, it's in the bump stops. So it's jacked up in excess height and then deflated. Oh, that's and the, that's why that never yeah. happened before. Oh. So I gotta take this connector off here and I already got two lines off. Take your time doing this and remember I put some WD-40 on the threads. There, now we got the valve out. Note that I marked this one because I'm not sure if they, if it's possible to confuse these. Now let's service this valve. 
Okay, I'm gonna give these a good scrub here. That is like as extensive as when we did the fuel pump on my Freelander. Stainless steel screws, wow. So, never opened one of these before? Oh, you didn't? No. Haven't? You know, like some spring going like boom. Oh, they have red o rings and we have black o rings. I don't think there is more to be dissembled on this side because these are the solenoids and you can see all this dirt here. So we're going to clean all this out and then here the middle one is different from the outer one and all I got to do here is pull on them. Start with the middle one. Oh boy. There is the middle one out. This is this one. And this is this one. And there are really small O-rings in here. So I made, that? I made this out of an old iPhone tool. This way I don't scratch the bores when I pull these out oh. using a metal pick. Well, iPhones and Land Rovers go well together. And so this goes over here. yeah. And that's it. Those are all the O-rings we got in here, I would say. Now let's inspect these. So this is on this one. See, there's another O-ring here. Oh my God. Yes. This one. So we have three per valve. And then this oh my God. comes apart like that. I hope you can get it back to Casa again. <gasps> Do you remember how it was? No. Well, you can see on the other one. Yeah, if I touch it first and not you. You're not funny today. Okay, but this one, see, it actually wasn't locked. This one is different. And it doesn't have an O-ring here. Okay, but I would assume if it has this mechanism to lock, of course it needs to be locked, okay? What is weird is that there are additional O-rings included, but maybe not in every kit. This, it looks like this is the kit we need here. So let's not confuse the O-rings. Okay. So we would need this one, which is the correct one. Right oh here. my God, there's a really tiny one. I wonder yeah. if we even find that one. Okay, so we're going to give this a scrub. I got all the O-rings out. Oh my God. That one just chucked out and I don't know where it's from. <laughs> and we haven't seen it before. So I would assume it is and this one here. Oh my god, you are stressing so now me. Now we got a problem, Houston. Oh my god. So we missed a part. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this guy is now our hero. Yeah. It's Mr. Bootsy. And the video is from 2015. <laughs> Oh okay. my god. <laughs> so he's going to be surprised that he's going to get 10,000 views now suddenly. So look at that. No more cheap Chinese made in Germany. Don't break it. I'll take your car. Oh. It came apart. Now Christian broke it. Ooh. Oh. oh. <laughs> it came apart. <laughs> so there's the little O-ring and the spring what he said. Oh yeah. my god. So let's change that one first. And now we also found the other three. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, exactly here. There. And. But it has. Ah, there's another one in there. Holy shit. Let's first see if this one is the same as this one. Doesn't really look like it. This one also has only one small one. So which one we're gonna put back on? The new one is smaller. I don't want to put the smaller one back on. No, Which I'm pretty sure the, this, uh, the small one is the old one. No. You sure? Yes. I'm certain the small one is a... See, the, the, the other small one included in the kit has that size. Oh, okay. Good size. Good okay, are we done arguing now? Yes. Now, that doesn't look good here. That's a big one. That is the wrong O-ring. So we have to put the old one back in. Yeah, that sucks. Hopefully that was not the problem. 
left them a bit. So, and I didn't break it, luckily. Yeah, I have to say. But what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to replace this one with one of these. Oh no, different. So we can forget that. We're not even going to open the other ones. Okay. Oh, see, there's a little seal here as well, which is not included, that sealing on here. Yeah. This is anyway back together. It didn't make much sense to disassemble this again. And anyway, our entire valve was not contaminated at all. Yes, but we're going to keep those small O-rings. So I have to say, this repair kit is actually quite useless. Unless you have some major contamination problem or you got some moisture in there and it froze open or something. As you can see, well, actually we cleaned it, but we did not have any uh, residue from the compressor. From that drying material. Drying material. Yeah, we, we didn't have that. So Yeah, so that's a good sign. And we put it back together. The one we saw from that guy in YouTube, his was all dirty. Well, we don't go any off-road dirt tracks for hundreds of miles. See, I think these O-rings are the other three we got. Ah. And we replace at least those. So they, they don't fit either. They don't fit either. So this repair kit is really crap. So we put some silicon grease. So we'll put this back together. So I got these all back in, put the connector back on, and snap this back in here. There it's in. Yeah, and I want to show you something. Look at that. Didn't lose the tie wrap yet and haven't had a fault all week. Oh my god, he's gonna turn on the echo. Oh my god, that's what he did. Oh my god, that is too much stress for me. After venting the air out of the system using the gap tool, I also have to re-enable the electronic air suspension. I had to push that button. Before that, I had a fault here. Oh, oh my God. It went up here. I thought the car is going to tip over. Now we're going to check these air fittings here. Turn on the light. Is it filming? Yeah, yeah. Don't oh. you want to put here also a little bit of spray? I did this while you were making lunch. Oh, really? So we got it serviced, but we didn't really find any root cause. We can put this back together and hopefully the problem is gone, but I don't think so. At least we serviced the valve. It's in. Yeah. The screw down there didn't break any clips this time. Oh my god, that screw needs some copper grease. To take the wheel arch out, you have to take the headlamp out, and the Australians, you have to take your bull bar off, which we don't have, of course. Good. Good. Seen us do that a million times. To 140. Oh my god. Oh. Now you can't get the check oh, out. <laughs> Still raising. Now it's going into off-road height. Yeah, it's going into off-road. Oh, you did that? Yeah, I thought. Now it's all messed up. So what does that mean? Compressor temperature and compressor is on. I turned it off at 119 degrees and we rather let it cool down. No. The plan is to investigate now if the air leak is gone by pulling the fuse tonight and checking it tomorrow morning. Maybe we're lucky. So far that's it for today's video. Unless you want to do something else. I got an envelope in the mail. So I got an, 
a letter from Ainsley out of Spain. And we traded patches and stickers. Oh, wow. Look, Land you Rover got it. Overland Span. So, thanks a lot, Angel. <laughs> this is, is awesome. So kind. I got new patches. If you want one, please send me an email. Apparently, Christian's going to detail my car, like Sarah and June. I'm going to read my book and sit here. Yeah. So, Christian is just as cool as Sarah and June. He also got Sonax. It's made in Germany, of course. He's cleaning. My rims is a toilet brush. <laughs> Rotary toilet brush. Oh my god, those rims look so good now. Christian just likes to clean. So there is a little bit of a difference in how long the compressor actually runs when we start the vehicle. So it looks like it's holding the pressure better. And it doesn't run as often. We'll see what it's doing overnight. How could someone have the urge making a snorkel quieter? Yeah. Huh? I mean, whoever <laughs> wants to make the snorkel quiet shouldn't have a snorkel. We're going to prep the vehicle quickly to see if it's sinking down overnight. So I have it in regular height, not in off-road height. I got the parking brake closed and I turn it off. And now I open the hood, the, the bonnet. bonnet. Okay, so here we got to take the fuse out. This one. Yes. Put it right here. Close this back up overnight so we don't get any critters. Look at that, my rims are all nice and clean. What we do now on each corner is measure the height from the ground. It's much easier. Eight, three, four. Right through the center. Eight, four, five. So we'll leave it here. Yes, yeah. That's okay. Oh no, it dropped again. Yeah, it dropped 15 millimeters. So this problem is not cured. Shit. Here it is. That one from the bottom. It would have been much easier to just take a screenshot of the height values in millimeter in the evening and in the morning and then I would be done. I... That's a Toyota way of doing stuff. It got basically a screen with the current height and it shows where we all at. Yeah, but not everyone then, has a gap to yeah, it. And then we would take basically a, a screenshot here of where we at and then one in the morning and that saves all the measuring. We're going to check how long the compressor is running after a start in the morning now. That was a cold start and it, oh, it just starts so beautifully. On? Yeah, now it's on. Look here, we had people asking if the oil pressure after start, it must be around 4 bar because that's basically the bypass valve of the pump. Yeah. Oh, and look at that. I missed it already. The compressor is already off, so it wasn't even on. For five seconds. Yeah, so this is really good. Yeah. Probably still have an air leak, a really minute leak. But as it looks right now, rebuilding this valve made a difference about the compressor running time for some reason. Because it used to run like 30, 35 seconds in the morning. So what shark do you want to buy? Oh, yeah. And or Bilstein. A piece. Well, Bilstein is just as much as OEM. So we're heading out for a trip. All packed up. Just for an overnight stay. Yeah. Not far from home. Yes. Look at the nice view we got here. Yes. So now we got to find a spot. Yeah. Wow, that is not bad. So that's our view. Rooftop tent command module. It's a uh, it's Cap Canaveral for rooftop tents. Yeah. Cap Canaveral gets hooked up right here 
to our rooftop tent box. Yeah, very yes. well. Now she clips it in right here. No, no. So I have to use quite a lot of force. Okay, so maybe I have to improve this. Cap Canaveral is costing too much time. <laughs> so now straighten it out and yeah, wait, put it the right? cable away. Oh, this My goes right? in here. Isn't that great? Oh my god, that is so cool! <laughs> so, this thing we built a couple of videos ago, if you're interested about it. Yes. It has the diesel heater controller, 12 volt charging, and Most 15. USB 50, charging? Yes. <laughs> and 15 euro LED light strips. Yeah. I get a lot of questions asked what kind of a tent this is. This model is an Easy On Chess. 140, so it's 140 centimeters wide. Christian thinks it's too small. I think it's just fine. <laughs> See there in this box is the diesel heater installed. So we can take this hose here and route it into the tent. And there's the plug board Vera plugged in and the supply plug going back to the gold zero. And there is solar on top. And look this thing here. This little antenna is our DAB plus antenna. And the cable runs down here on the Discovery. You can just shove it in here without taking anything off. And then you bring it around here and here's where you get into the door going through the weather strip. Now she's setting up her camp kitchen, which I haven't finished. So I'm going to get lectured for the rest of the night. She sued it all by herself. And My that's where me? her cutlery is inside. And then I'm supposed to build like a riser. So our stove is elevated. We're expecting guests, okay? We're not drinking this by ourselves. Yeah. So look at that. So we've got neighbors. Oh, look at that sausages. That's our morning view. And it looks like Vera is making coffee. So making coffee here. <laughs> Move them around a little bit. <gasps> it's enough. Oh, don't you like the sound of my snorkel? So guess what? After we serviced the front valve, my car is in normal height. It didn't lower itself. So... Today is Thursday and the car is still in normal height. Remember, we rebuilt the front valve last Saturday. I mean, maybe we actually fixed the leak we had. Usually every single morning, the front left side was dropped down. That's the bridge tower in Worms. You guys know where Worms is? That's where Martin Luther nailed something on the door. Maybe you heard <laughs> about that. And we are driving by Rammstein, which is the largest U.S. Air Force base outside of the United States. And guess what I just saw? The brand spanking new Bronco. And of course, I didn't have my camera ready. So that sucks. <laughs> 